One question that comes up a lot in filmmaking and photography is what aperture should I be using to get the most cinematic or the most filmic look that everyone's kind of after. Today I'm going to explain why there actually does seem to be an aperture number that sort of checks that cinematic box. But first, comment below, let me know what you think about this intro I've been using. Now, before we get started, I should say that there are, of course, many different things that contribute to your favorite film look, whichever film that may be. If you want to check out more videos on the film look, I've made a lot of videos here on this channel and I will continue to make more in the future, so definitely click that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. For today, let's focus on what Aperture does to get you closer to that film look. So one of my favorite cinematographers, and since you're watching this video, I'd be almost willing to bet one of your favorites as well, even if you don't know it, Roger Deakins stated in an interview once that he found that a lens operated to its best advantage between aperture values of between about 4 to 5.6. Let's demonstrate why that is. For that, we're going to need help from the Empire. It's going to be the deciding factor here in verifying what changing the aperture does to your image. Let's start with the most closed aperture value first, 16. Here you'll see that virtually everything is in focus from front to back. As we start opening the aperture, you'll see a gradual blurring of the foreground and background as the depth of field becomes shallower. When we get to the point where the aperture is wide open, you'll see that only a sliver of focus is left from front to back. Now if we go back sort of toward the middle of that range, around that 5.6 value that we talked about, not only will you still get a sharp image, but you'll also still manage to get some foreground and background blur. This value is good for a few reasons. Around this aperture value, you tend to get the sharpest image, that is, a few stops down from wide open. Sometimes it can be about f8, depending on what lens you're using and what its maximum aperture value is. This is a physical property of just about every lens, no matter which one you're using. Another reason is because you can still achieve some separation between your subject and foreground and background, but not so much that it's completely unapparent what context they're in. In other words, you still want to be able to make out some of the details for the environment that they're in without it being completely faded away. Another super important reason is that 5.6 allows you or whoever your focus puller is to actually maintain focus on your subject without losing it. We all occasionally love that sweet background blur you get from a wide open lens, but the truth is your focus puller is going to hate you. It's really difficult to maintain a half-inch sliver of focus, especially if you decide that your subject and or your camera will be moving at the same time. When you take all this into account, you'll realize that 5.6 is really just sort of a mid-ground between being wide open and losing some of those details, or being stopped down and getting everything in your image in focus. Now by no means am I saying just always shoot 5.6. In fact, if you pay close attention to your favorite films, you'll notice that generally the shot's breakdown will look a little something like this. An establishing shot for a scene or the film itself will usually be a wide angle to give location context, and will usually stop down so you can get more into focus for that same reason. After that, the majority of the shots in a scene, and by extension the rest of the film as well, are shot around that 4 to 5.6 aperture value, or even 8 in some cases. It's really only in the case of close-ups and insert shots that you tend to see those wide open apertures with blurry backgrounds. This is really just sort of a modern trend in film and photography as over the years lenses have optically gotten better. If you go back and watch some older films, you don't tend to see as many of these types of shots. As a result, you tend to see more attention paid to other parts of production, for example, set design and lighting. A film like Citizen Kane 
is almost entirely shot masterfully, by the way, in very, very deep focus by Greg Toland. I encourage you to go back and watch your favorite films and sit there and count how many times you see shots that are in deep focus, how many of those shots have a lot of background blur and are separated from their subject, and how many shots are just somewhere in the middle. You may find that always shooting wide open, which many people attribute with being filmic or cinematic in the modern era, is really sort of a mistake in correctly recognizing what makes a shot seem desirable. As usual, I'll be making more content like this in the future, so make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, stick around. I'll see you in the next one.